If you want the best one PC streaming setup money can buy, which of these CPUs do you choose? Is it Intel's new absolute furnace of a 10 core, the 10900K, or its last gen counterpart, the 9900K, or do you go team red and pick up a absolute monster of a 16 core Ryzen 13950X, or that one's little bother, the 13900X? Let's test them and find out. But first, a message from this video sponsor, Azrock. Their new B550 Tai Chi and PG Velocity boards offer support for third gen and future AMD Ryzen CPUs, PCI Gen 4 support to their Hyper M.2 slots, 2.5 gig Ethernet, up to 16 phase duct mask power design, Nehemic audio for an outstanding sound experience, and of course, Polychrome Sync RGB. Check them out at the link below and thank you to Azrock for supporting the channel. Let me run you through the tests. Now because these are the sort of CPUs you buy if you have more money than cents, you probably also have a 1440p monitor, so that's what we'll be playing and streaming at, and you probably also have something like an RTX 2080 Ti, so that's what we'll be using too. Now of course quality is also probably going to be pretty important to you, so we're going to be playing at ultra settings and obviously using CPU encoding here for the stream and streaming at Twitch's maximum supported bitrate of 6000 kilobits per second. I did try higher but unfortunately that just straight up didn't work. Now we're also using the fast presets for the encoder and we're actually recording locally as well so that you can edit a montage clip later uh, and that is using the high quality presets in OBS so a second copy of the encoder too. We'll be playing the games at 180 second runs and doing them multiple times to get reasonably consistent averaged results and as for the games that is COD Modern Warfare and Battlefield 5. So how do they perform? Let's take a look. So let's start with Battlefield 5. Now like I said, this was tested at 1440p ultra settings with an RTX 2080 Ti, and you can see that the Intel chips when not streaming have a convincing lead over the Ryzen ones. When you do start streaming though, you lose a significant portion of your average FPS, a lot, lot more so than the Ryzen ones. You're losing, um, you know, 10 FPS at most on Ryzen, whereas you're losing 30 FPS on Intel. That's a pretty big deal. Now the same can be said for Call of Duty Modern Warfare. The gap is a lot closer here, uh, so you don't actually lose as much FPS while streaming COD as you do streaming Battlefield, but if you look at the difference between the uh, streaming and non-streaming for the Ryzen chips, you're still only losing a couple of FPS, whereas on Intel you're still losing over 10 on both, give or take. That's a pretty big deal and we're going to talk more about the performance as average FPS isn't all you need to consider. So as you can expect, the Intel chips have a competitive advantage over Ryzen here when you're not streaming. Anywhere from a 5 to 10 FPS lead, which at these sorts of high frame rates isn't the biggest deal, but a win is still a win. When you start streaming though, oh boy, the Intel chips lose anywhere between 6 and 21% of their performance and while the Intel chips, at least on uh, COD, even still retain a higher average result than the Ryzen chips overall, that doesn't paint the whole picture. Here is a frame time graph for the 10900K. Basically, those bars represent how long each frame takes to draw and the lower those bars are and the more consistent across the whole width it is, the better the playing experience. As you can see, those peaks are massive, in fact, those peaks represent 22 FPS, which is not great. Imagine playing it over 100 FPS average, but having 22 FPS spikes randomly every few seconds. You can imagine it's not the most enjoyable playing experience, and as you can see, the, the bar is massive across the entire width. For contrast, here is a 9900K. Now, the spikes are actually worse on this, but it's actually more consistent across its length, so it was actually a bit of a better playing experience if the, the stutters that you have were more visible. As for the Ryzen chips, they didn't have that problem. They were smooth pretty much across the whole run, and there wasn't really any major FPS drops, at least that I can remember anyway, and so I was, I was pretty happy with that. And then there's the footage. See, here's the 13A50X playing Battlefield 5. Now the gameplay itself is pretty bad, don't worry about that, but the footage 
is smooth, it's crisp, it's enjoyable to watch, even if the enjoyment mostly comes from laughing at me trying to play the game, but either way, the footage is good. Now, here's the 19900K playing Battlefield 5 as well. I'm just gonna let this one play for a second. The 10900K is a little better, it still drops frames every now and again and I don't think that that's the, the most enjoyable experience as a viewer, but it's not the worst and certainly not as bad as the 9900K. With that said though, neither of the Ryzen chips, both the 3900 and the 3950X, had frame drops in either the stream nor the local recordings, so again, the Ryzen chips get a pretty solid thumbs up from me. Now, of course, there are a whole load of things that you could change about these tests to favor whichever CPU you actually have, including just not using it for streaming, opting to use your very capable graphics card encoder instead. But from a CPU streaming perspective, these Ryzen chips get my wholehearted recommendation. Not only do you get more raw power from them for, say, editing your highlight reel to go on YouTube later, but you have like 50% less power draw, you get a better streaming experience, and there are still cheaper motherboards available that actually let you overclock too, and a whole lot more, so I would personally go with either of these Ryzen chips. Now, of course, I could be wrong and you might think differently, and so why don't you let me know in the comments down below. Now with that said, if you want to check out either or any of the chips that I've talked about in this video, I'm going to leave links to them in the description down below. Those will be Amazon affiliate links that will take you to your local Amazon store where you can see pricing when and where you watch this because they all kind of vary. Otherwise, if you want to see more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, you can hit that subscribe button and you can also check out a load of other links in the description down below, including the link to our sponsor or Patreon if you want to see ad-free versions of these videos instead. There's also a whole load of other stuff like merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one, just a load of other stuff too. And there are plenty of other videos over there you can check out, including the 3600X versus 1400F streaming video if you don't have more money than cents, but still want to stream with your CPU. Otherwise, that is pretty much it. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments down below. But yeah, we'll see you all in the next video.